All right, today's the day. I'm finally giving away the Miller Electric Multimatic 215 welder. An amazing machine that I've used on my C10 to build the engine mounts, the trans mounts, the exhaust system. I've welded steel, I've welded stainless. It will MIG, it will TIG, it will stick weld. Thing's badass, let's be honest. It's lightweight, it's portable. It's amazingly easy to use. I think you're gonna love it if you win. And right now my buddy Matt and I are gonna go through some of the comments that didn't quite make it, but that were hilarious anyway. And we're gonna tell you who's taking this thing home. I hope I remember the rules to this deal. <laughs> Uh, this, this got out of control. It did. Quickly. Yeah. Damn Quickly. near 14,000 comments from people um, who wanted to win the Miller Multimatic 215 or wanted to tell me I had a dad gut now or, um, yeah, that was you know, bizarre. just wanted to tell me about their cat tendencies, you know, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of good info out there for yeah. you guys. Thank you for that. <laughs> you remember, know? remember, I, I wanted to know, what did you have in your garage? Why do you need the welder? You know, give me a passionate response. You know, mm. like, how is this going to enrich your life? I, the goal here was to get somebody out there cruising something that they're not cruising now because it's in the garage, broken, and they need a welder. Something that's going to do the road a favor. Right. That's what you want. We have a winner. Uh, we also have several people that didn't win for obvious reasons and we'd really like to read some of these comments to you right now before we tell you who won the welder yes so uh here they are in no particular order these are the ones that made us laugh matt duncan without a welder i'll be forced to duct tape my roll cage together which uh, sucks but yeah i mean but you do what you got to do slagworm 2240 or i'm sorry 224 this was awful hard to masturbate to but i did it <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Didn't need to know that. Uh, are, is that the one we're saving to the end? Yeah, right. Okay. Rich D1 wrote, make it three yards, MFR, and we'll have ourselves an automobile race. Oh, yeah, and I need a welder. Uh, excellent quote from the movie Two Lane Blacktop. Probably one of the greatest lines ever uttered by a man in the movie ever before by James Taylor. Uh, didn't win, though, but um, thank you for that. Made my day. Rob Koppel. I have no use for a welder, but I can sell that and use that money to buy cool FSM swag. <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> Good night, gamer. I need a welder to fix my broken ass life. <laughs> Jim Mills, I can't remember if I left the comment already or not. Hopefully leaving more than one comment doesn't disqualify me. No, it doesn't, um, but two wrongs don't make a right. There's a couple of folks that are, my, me and my girlfriend's relationship was like iron. And then we broke up, so I need your welder. Fix my, my heart. heart. <laughs> uh, Rob Tyson 3, I'm 16 and would rather win your wife's washcloth. No. Rob. Um, move on. <laughs> the most creative one that did not win. This uh, is it right here. Yeah. Brian 3000 GG. I might steal this. It's your copyright, but I'll, I'll give you all the credit. <laughs> I'm an actual house cat. After I take a bong hit, I swear I can type in English for about 60 some meow, 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 meow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any fireworks. I don't have a drum. I have nothing to really make this amazing. But here is our winner. <clears throat> and it, they wrote a paragraph, which I kind of wanted that. I, I, wanted the, I wanted details. I wanted to know everything. I wanted to know why you really needed this welder, uh, which backfired on me because... Almost 14,000 responses came through, and it took a while to look at them all. <laughs> Monica Kimball, she just stole my heart with this, actually. So she wrote about her husband, uh, who just got out of the Army. He's going to school for metal fab. He's got a 69 Mustang Grande, um, which is an interesting-looking car, if you've ever seen one before. And he's had it since he was a freshman in high school. It's only got 80,000 original miles. It's his pride and joy, and it has been on the back burner as he served our country, as he, you know, got married, had several children, and, uh, you know, he's busting his ass every day to make sure his kids and his wife are taken care of, and that car is, it's not moving along like it should. And uh, she says, 
This Weller would be heaven sent because our two-year-old son loves riding in this car, but we don't let him ride because the fumes from the exhaust are bad. It's a three-inch dumped exhaust. He already has the new exhaust, but he hasn't had time with school or family life to install it. Um, and basically, they want to take family road trips in this car. They want to go to Sonic. And uh, she writes, if, if we win this welder, it would be one of the greatest things that have ever happened to us. And uh, he's the type of guy that puts everyone else before his own needs. He's the guy that helps you on the side of the road. In short, this is the guy. This is the guy that should have won this. There were a lot of really good stories out there. A few of them were just too, you know, really, like, heart-wrenching to even believe some of them. But this one, this was easy. As soon as I read this, I thought, all right, the right person's going to get this welder. The right person's going to put it to use. And uh, hopefully one day I see you guys out there cruising on the highway. So... Congratulations, Monica Kimball and whoever your husband is, because you didn't write his name <laughs> down. Uh, you guys have won the Miller Multimatic yeah. 215. Yay! And now I'm going to work on my truck, because I've got an exhaust system built. Alright? Okay, friends, here we go. When I last left you, I built engine mounts, I built a trans mount, and now it is time to connect the exhaust system. Now originally back in 2008, my buddies at Magnaflow fabricated a really nice stainless steel exhaust system that fit perfect with the LS2 and a set of JBA headers, neither of which fit the Chevrolet Performance LT4 that's in the truck now. I've mocked up several different sets of aftermarket headers, none of them fit, but I stumbled upon these factory manifolds from Chevrolet Performance that if you look closely are a really good design and I think all I'm going to give up by not running an aftermarket header is some weight because this is a good flowing manifold. Here's the driver's side manifold. Fits really well. The only interference problem I have is right here with the steering and this area is drilled and tapped so you can bolt a factory heat shield to it which I won't be doing. I'm going to grind the bottom of that down to clear the steering U-joint there. And I'm gonna to have to fabricate a couple of flanges there and a couple of new downpipes because my buddies at Stainless Headers do not have those flanges in stock, but they do have 45 degree mandrel bends that I can cut up and make those downpipes work. So that's what's happening. If you have really keen eyes, you'll notice the puddle of oil on the floor. And yes, the back of the crankshaft is still leaking in the engine because it's missing one bolt. And you really smart people who told me, drain the pan, drain the pan. Well, I did do that. It still leaks out of the crank. I can't get the, all the oil out of the crank. So <laughs> until I put the last bolt, until I put the clutch and flywheel that's actually going to be in there permanently, she'll just keep on leaking and I'll just keep cleaning up the mess. Yay. So let's start building stuff. Okay. It's time to build our new flanges, and let's talk about how we're going to trace our parts. There's a lot of different ways to do that. <laughs> uh, the joys of working in a basement. It sounds like my kids just dumped, I'm guessing, a bucket this large full of crayons or Legos on the floor. Pretty sure that's what that is. But that's neither here nor there. Let's talk. It's time to lay out our new parts. I've got to make flanges. They're going to be out of flat stainless steel stock. I need to cut them. I need to put four holes in each one. The first hole, the big two and a half inch monster for the exhaust pipe to fit into. The other three holes are where the mounting bolts are going to go. Now, I need to semi-accurately trace all of these holes. There will be a little play in the system, but the more accurate, the better. What I like to use when things need to be really precise, or as precise as they get here on Finnegan's Garage, is Dicom. This is machinist layout fluid. Sprays out of a can blue, coats apart, and then you can take a scribe like this one, and you can make a very fine sharp line on the part that under most circumstances will not go away while you're working on the part, which is why it's great. You can grind, you can cut, the line will still be there. It sprays on, as you can see, that's what our stainless used to look like. This is what it looks like now. It is now suitable for me to scribe a line into that will stay there throughout this process. I just got another text message. And then all I'm going to do is take my scribe here. 
and trace. These are transfer punches. These things are great. It's a shaft with a point on the end. You can put this in a hole that you don't know the location of, tap it with a hammer, and then it will tell you exactly where the center is. You know, give or take a little bit, depending on if there's a wiggle room or not. All right, and if you look down here, I can't get my transfer punch in there. So I'm just going to use the right angle end of my scribe here and hold it as close to vertical as I can and move around the hole marking a circle that I can then use to find the approximate center of that hole. It's a little difficult to see but we now have an outline of our part and we know the location of the center of each hole. Now the thing I can't trace here for our new flange is our exhaust pipe hole. But what I can do is measure the diameter of the hole and then measure the distance from each edge of the hole to each bolt hole. And that will help me plot it out on our new part. Calipers would be more precise, but this here doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, our flange could be a little oversized, it'd be fine. And the distance from the edge to the center line of our hole It's about seven-eighths of an inch. Got the points plotted of where my hole should be. I use a simple circle template to mark the actual hole. Yeah, buddy, what's going on? I'm working. What are you doing? Yeah, bud. You coming to see me? Daddy, what are you doing? <laughs> Daddy's down here working. What are you doing? So I'm going to use a plasma cutter. This is a Miller Spectrum 375 Extreme. And it will go through this, believe it or not. Compressed air and electricity. That's what's going to cut this out. Here's the kind of results you can expect. Doing it by hand, using manual tools. No CNC stuff here. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You want perfection, use a computer, use a CNC machine. You want to do it yourself at home? You can use tools like these, take your time, and you can make parts that do work. There we go. This is our new 45 degree bend. And it fits good, wraps around the firewall nice, but it's too short. The bend needs to be down several inches in order to line up with the other exhaust pipe. So what I'm going to do now is put a straight edge on the bottom of this pipe and measure the distance. Okay, so I've got a straight edge running along the lower pipe that's in the truck and that'll give me the distance I need to drop the down pipe. You'll notice I'm using my old abrasive chop saw and that's because after six months I finally chipped enough teeth and clogged enough teeth on the fine cold slugger blade that uh, yeah it'll go through thick stuff but I'm pretty sure it's going to kink this thin wall tubing so Going back to old reliable until I can remember to buy a new blade for the good saw.
Here's an easy way to deburr the inside of tubing. I don't know if I showed you this the last time we cut tubing in here, but a file works great. Upside down pipe, I've got to fuse a couple of curved pieces of tubing together. I'm going to use my handy dandy gauge here from Miller to figure out how thick the tube is. And it looks like 16 gauge, it's a little thinner than that. 18 gauge, alright. Alright, it's not 20 gauge. It's pretty much 18 gauge that's been filed a little bit to get the burrs off of it. And according to this, 18 gauge is about 47 thousandths of an inch thick. So, I'm gonna go adjust the Multimatic 215. We're gonna come down here. 18 gauge and it wants 55 amps but I'm gonna change my tungsten diameter and I'm gonna go down to a 16th diameter tungsten and I'm gonna turn this down to about 45 amps which is about one amp per thousandths of an inch thickness of material it's a good guideline you can use that and in most applications it'll work and that'll enable me to floor the pedal and fuse two pieces of tubing together real quick without filler rod and that'll give me the opportunity to mock stuff up without welding it completely. Real fast, safety tip. Early on in my channel, you guys watched me clean parts with brake clean before welding them. And some of you freaked out because you thought I was using chlorinated brake clean when I wasn't. I explained it to you, you guys understood, no big deal. But one of the things I wanna show you that I didn't then is that when you're shopping for brake clean, if you look for the red can, there's two different ones. There's one that's chlorinated and non-chlorinated. The chlorinated one contains tetrochloroethylene, which when you heat it, creates phosgene gas. And phosgene gas attacks your nervous system. It can even kill you. Stuff is nasty. So be careful. Look at the can when you're getting it. Strongest brake clean available, chlorine in it. Don't weld parts after you clean them. Non-chlorinated, okay to weld parts afterwards. There's also a green can. This one's non-chlorinated. Now, is there a green can that is chlorinated? I don't know. And if you really want to be safe, denatured alcohol or acetone, those are fine for cleaning parts before you weld them. See that? That's what I'm talking about right there. Metal is fused together, but there's no filler in there. So if this doesn't work out, I could just break this in half. But it's secure enough for me to mock up the part. Look at what we got here. New downpipe is connected. It's pretty easy too. We lopped off three inches of the old one, added it to our new 45 leg that we got from stainlessheaders.com. Shortened the back end of the downpipe, and it all went together like butter. See that? We were even able to save the O2 bung that was in here before. One less thing to do. Next thing we'll do now is tack the flange to the down tube while it's in the truck. That way we make sure our angle is right. Pull the whole thing out, back purge it, and weld it on the bench. Here she is. This is the driver's side. All tacked together, ready to go. This right here is a machinist 123 block, and I'm using that to space the exhaust off the frame rail. I gave it one inch clearance there. That should be enough to keep from cooking the paint off the frame rail, hopefully. I'm now going to TIG weld the flange to the downpipe which is going to be a pain because I've got to operate the foot control from way down here. And this is one of those moments when propping the foot control up on something like my drop light is going to make it a little more comfortable to use. Take the tungsten out a little more so I can get better access into the corner. Because I have the tungsten out further I'm running a little bit larger diameter cup 
This is a number seven, and I've turned out, and I've turned up the argon flow. We should be good to go here. This will be about 180 amps. That welds nice. Well, it's really nice. That was an easy, easy tack there. So I'll do one on the bottom here. That'll make sure that when I disassemble this, it shouldn't move around. And then I can finish it on the bench. Oh, you're going to love this move. I need both my hands. I really can't operate the pedal with my foot, so I'm going to put it between my knees. Here's the passenger side pipe. Came out good. Tube fitment is on point. No gap there. No gap there. It fits the flange really well. Note the aluminum foil. That is plugging the end of it. It's got a couple holes poked there. And I got a tube going in this side. And I am flowing argon through this tube to back purge it. This is gonna do a couple of things, and we've talked about this on my channel before. I'm a big fan of back purging. It gives you a flatter weld. There will be no sugaring on the back side, no contamination on the back side of the weld. It's just a stronger, better joint when you're done. Can you weld it without back purging? Yeah, you can, but this is stainless steel. It's a reactive metal. Displacing the oxygen on the back side of the weld will get rid of some of the contaminants that might be there, and it's just stronger. Aerospace guys will build airplanes so they don't fall out of the sky. Those guys back purge their welds. So why not do it here if you can? All it requires is a little more argon. I've got it hooked up to my other bottle here on my other welder. And we're going to turn it down a little bit to about five cubic feet per hour. And we're ready to go. I talk about this all the time, but here's a good comparison of back purging versus not back purging. On the left, you can see where I first tacked the tube together. And on this one, I happened to actually use filler rod. I didn't just fuse it together and that's the result of not back purging it with pure argon. On the right, you can see the bead is much flatter, much cleaner looking. That's because when I went to finish weld the tube, I flowed pure argon throughout the entire tube to displace all of the oxygen out of it. And that's the result. A much better weld. Other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be switching back and forth between two different sized tungsten. On the left, you have 1 16th of an inch. On the right, you have 3 30 seconds. I'm going to use the same cup on both of them, number 7, but I'll use the smaller tungsten when I'm just welding the tube joints. I'll use the thicker tungsten when I'm going to crank up the amps to weld the tube joints to this 3 8 thick flange. There we go, all welded. And not too bad for a mediocre welder in his garage. If I do say so myself. I'll let that cool off, and then it's time to install it. And be done! Look at that. Exhaust is done! And it fits good, and it looks good, and I'm happy with it. And best of all, it clears the steering, which is just one item in a long list of things that was already done that I hope to never undo. 
There's a lot left to do on this truck. I'm thinking next time you guys see this thing, I'll tackle core support, radiator, front sheet metal, because then it's a whole truck and I can start eyeballing things that really matter, like the messed up wheel offset and whether or not I should cut out the middle of the bed floor so that I can actually access the suspension in the fuel cell. Kind of hard to put gas into right now. Yeah, you'll see that all next time on Finnegan's Garage. Or not. Um, if you didn't win, well, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> <laughs> not very many people subscribed. Uh, but I do appreciate all the comments. All right, back to work. 14 grand. Good God. Ooh, see the stickers? Got them all. They're in stock. FSMgarage.com. How's that for a plug? Good plug. There's good ones in there, isn't there? You need a Miller sticker on there now. Man, yeah. there's no room, though. <laughs> Maybe your next laptop. Yeah. Bigger laptop, more stickers.